Hey everyone, what's going on? So, sorry I've not been uploading recently. I've been very tired and I've just not had time. Uh, I have had videos in the back, but I've just not had the time or the energy to do thumbnails and stuff like that. But I'm back now and I just thought before we get back into the Doctor Who things, I thought we'd just do a quick video on Red Dwarf as its 12th series is starting in October. And I'm really excited for it and I've been re-watching loads recently. And I thought, why not do a video on my Red Dwarf collection? Now, it's not the biggest, uh, but there is stuff here. So we'll, I thought we'd stop the DVDs um, and then we'll move on to uh, the little other bits and pieces I've got, but it's not much. So obviously with the DVDs uh, we have the sort of volume edition things of the seasons. Uh, there are other ways of getting them, there is the Just The Shows box sets and the anniversary of the Just The Shows box sets, but these are the ultimate ones because these are the bonus discs for each individual season. So here we have Red Dwarf 1, which has over 90 minutes of bonus material and is the original complete first series. It has six episodes, The End, Future Echoes, Balance of Power, Waiting for God, Confidence of Paranoia and Me 2. The bonus features are a cast commentary on each episode, uh, writers and directors commentary on uh, the uh, episode 1, which is The End. Uh, this is the only time we ever really see this, except really on Back to Earth. After that, it's just all cast commentaries, which I'm fine with because they are quite funny. We have the deleted scenes, which is pretty much what you get with every single uh, one. The smeg ups, the outtakes. Uh, we have the original trailer uh, from 1988, um, which is interesting because it is just a bit of the show where it's saying Red Dwarf coming at nine o'clock on BBC Two in a very sort of 80s way. The orig uh, original, <laughs> the launching Red Dwarf original documentary, or oh, documentary, it's not really original. Um, which just says how they got off the ground, and it, it took a, a long time because they wrote the pilot back, back in '83, and it came on air in '88. Then we have drunk featurette, which is all the time they're drunk or pissed or you know smacked off the tits. Then we have the Japanese version at the end. Why not? Uh, special effects raw footage, which is to do with all the old model work, basically just of Red Dwarf, the ship itself. We have isolated music cues, which is the soundtrack, and then talking book chapters, which is just some of the audiobook chapters from uh, with this it would be Last Man on Earth I'm not too sure I'm, I'd look at the bonus disc of this one yet a uh, photo gallery which is all the publicity show, uh, shot a web link and a hidden easter eggs and a collector's booklet which I will show you now here it is this is the standard collector's booklet for the, uh, the first six series 12 pages documenting the special features the series itself and then each individual episode uh, about no, no real sort of actual uh, synopsis just the making and then we have watch out for and classic dwarf uh, then we're at the back with the chapter points with two images and join the official red dwarf fan club then we also have in series one a bbc dvd sort of thing uh, the back has some red dwarf stuff on there uh, the series eight uh, videos a scutter there with dog tags pictures shirt a red dwarf a blister a good guess and yeah, and inside we have DVDs along with more DVDs, which one of them is Red Dwarf with the original cover out by the looks of things because that's very different to the uh, one like we actually got. But yeah, and then the discs themselves, I'll show you this too. It is Red Dwarf 1, disc 2. And they are, it is in one of those formats where they are really annoying to get out and can also be scratched. And also, no place for the booklets to go, so there's a chance of them being folded. Moving on to series two of Red Dwarf. Again, that is a bonus feature. Same sort of things. The only difference is oh, we have a Red Dwarf A to Z documentary, uh, a Doug Naylor interview, alternate personalities feature at Tongue Tied on Court, which is the full length music video of Tongue Tied, which is weirdly, you know, a decent song, which is, you know, a, a special effects from footage, so obviously. And yeah, that's pretty much series two. Those songs says Christ and Better Than Life. Thanks for the memory. Stasis Leak, Creek, and uh, Parallel Universe. I really like series two. Uh, I don't really like. I don't. Queeg. Uh, actually, the start of Queeg I really like. But the Queeg, the moments of Queeg itself are. Yeah. Uh, Crichton's okay. Better Than Life's really good. Thanks for the memory's good. Stasis Leak's really good. And Parallel Universe is really good. And yeah, really, really nice. So obviously we have Rimmer and List of the Frontier, just like on series one. And of course we have the collector's booklet in this one. Special features of these are really well done. And there is lots to offer with these. Uh, and these cost about two quid each in uh, second hand shops. But yes, there's Red Wolf 2. 
same thing going on. Chapter put to the back. Yeah, uh, each chapter put is named as well. Uh, there is six on these, but I'm pretty sure. I'll have to double check. Six. Um, I'm getting maybe it's later on that where it comes nine. I swear there's nine on some of them. But yeah, there's the booklet. Disc, same principle, still no pictures. Now we move on to series three, where the first picture discs come in. We're signed by Robert Llewellyn here. We have over three hours on this one. There's commentaries, um, early cast ones, are all changed, original documentary about making it, about the making of series three, which is really interesting. We have the deleted scenes. Hattie's Dimension Jump Diary of Dimension Jump 10, which is the Red Wolf sort of main convention. Uh, tribute to Mel Bibby, who has sadly died in 2002, who was the amazing designer who worked on Red Wolf 3. And for, and I think all others after that, uh, apart from obviously Back to Earth and the more new ones because he is obviously dead. Uh, then we also have Food Feature, a backwards forwards, which is no, technically backwards, backwards. I don't know why it's forwards because backwards forwards is backwards, but backwards backwards is backwards backwards. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we also have trailers, raw effects footage, um, you know. I mean, you can't really go. Uh, as you can see, in Model Hunter 23, there is a very nice speck of dust. I mean, what can I say? And then obviously that photo gallery and that, you know, I'm not listing every single one on every single one because my throat's killing me. Uh, but yeah, those are sort of the basics. And also, this has backwards, marooned, polymorph, body swap, time slides, and the last day. All in here. Unfortunately, yeah. And this also has a uh, disc trays. Yay. And there's the booklet. Same principle with the booklet, Red Wolf 3. Now we move on to Red Wolf 4, Series 4. Again, three hours of bonus. For some reason, it's like that again. But there's the booklet. Um, this one feels a lot, isn't, doesn't feel as good as quality. But yeah, there's the chapter points in that. Uh, yeah, see, nine now. See, there's nine of them now. So yeah, um, check Series 3 and see if it becomes nine. In three. Yes, it does. So after Series 2, there is nine chapter points. Did they get it longer? Possibly. Yeah, maybe they did. They feel longer, certainly. But yeah, Red Dwarf 4. Uh, cast commentary that... Well, Bob Fetch just attacked me. Excuse us a moment. Um, uh, the scenery has fallen. Uh, VHSs aren't the best thing to be propping up a, a Bob Fetch. There we go. Uh, yeah, we have Camille, DNA, Justice White, Old Dimension Jump, and Meltdown, which is my favourite episode. Meltdown is. Well, this isn't my favourite series. We have cast commentary, built to the last original documentary, which I haven't watched. Well, I have watched, but not recently. I haven't really touched a special disc on this in a while. A3, Mirror, Laughing, Lame. Uh, what else is uh, Lure, Featurette. Can't Smeg, Won't Smeg, Special. Which I think really should have been called Can't Smeg, Can't Smeg, Won't Smeg, Don't Smeg. But, you know. Uh, trailers, raw effects footage, obviously, and then talking book chapters again. Uh, this will be... We're going to be... Or would it be backwards? No, no, because that. How about I don't know? I don't, 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 don't know. And now we move on to series 5, which I have, or Red Dwarf 5, which I have two copies of. So, here we have Red Dwarf 5. Here's two copies. I'll explain why in a bit. But this is the main copy I have. So, this has Hollow Ship, The Inquisitor, Terraform, Quarantine, which is the best episode on this, Demons and Angels, and Bat Reality, which is the second best, although Bat Reality is seen as one of the, you know, it's up there with Gunner and the Apocalypse. But I prefer Quarantine because Mr. Flippel is very angry. Simple as. Uh, obviously, we have Rimmer in that on the front. Uh, back to Distrays, which is nice. And then the booklet there, Red Dwarf 5. Uh, bonus features, fan commentary on Back to Reality, uh, which was a competition for fans. They could win to do the commentary on the DVD. And they do. And I've listened to the star of it, and it's okay. Um, heavy Science Riddle Documentary, Dwarfing USA, Documentary of the Making of the US Pilot, Bad Guys, would you shut up, Bad Guys, Featurette, uh, the sound of the effects of Red Dwarf 5, because this is where the model shots really come into their own, uh, Dave Holling's Radio Sketch, and that's pretty much all the exclusive kind of stuff, the stuff that is, you know, the defining stuff. I watched all this last night, all in one go, all of the series, and yeah, I really like Series 5. Um, I don't, I mean, Terraform's are probably the weakest, and Quarantine's the strongest, I'd say. The Inquisitor's uh, a really good one, though, as well. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's Series 5. And 
Now, why do I have another one? Well, because this is the first one I got. But would you look at that? And that is not acceptable in my DVD shelf. Uh, so, yeah. But also, incidentally, different disc tray. More like the American ones. Hmm. Uh, better look at that. There you go. Let's do the ones, the more British style ones. But yeah, apart from that, there's no difference. Uh, well, that didn't sound good. Anyway, now we move on to my favourite series, Red Dwarf 6. Or maybe it's my second favourite. Hmm. I don't know, I really like series 3. But yeah, th this has got, this is a contender for my favourite one. Uh, this is obviously our Sirens, uh, Legion, Gunman of the Apocalypse. Oh, uh, yeah, oh, it's tired. Ema Hook, which is Polymorph 2, uh, Rimmer World, and Out of Time. Uh, this was the last series for a long time. This was, um, I think, for a lot of Red Dwarf fans, this was right. This is it, that's the last one. Because Series 7, this is 1993, Series 7 is 1997, which is a four year gap, which is quite big. Uh, you know, I'd say like 19. I mean, if I was a fan by 1995, I would have come to the conclusion that it was gone. You know, there wasn't any more Red Dwarf. But I didn't live in 1995, so you know I can't really give my opinion. But yeah, uh, so we have uh, cast commentary, we have a fan commentary on *Gunman of the Apocalypse*, *The Star Burgers* original documentary, *Howard Goodall* set in the school, sick featurette, *Return to Lardo* or *Ladio* a featurette, behind-the-scenes footage, interview with Anthony D. Emony, Dave Holland's radio sketch, and that's it for sort of um, stuff that I, you know everything else is the basic stuff that you get. And also now we move on to my second gripe with these DVDs. What the f is that? That's two discs in one tray. What Phyllis Tan came up with that? That's the booklet. But yeah, that oh that, that this makes another appearance with three discs. Oh what joy! But yeah, series six, really really good series. Highly recommend it. Um, I think if you've got the just the shows and you have a favourite series, I definitely get, recommend getting the this of that series because it is just an immortal version of it, you know. But yeah, now we move on to Red Dwarf Seven. Haven't touched the bonus disc, which is why these stickers are on. But your Red Dwarf 7 has Tika to Ride, Stoke Me a Clipper, Our Boars, I haven't seen the Red Dwarf 7 in quite a while, Duck Soup, Blue, Beyond a Joke, Epidine, and Narchery. Yes, the, the, those are the, what it's called. And bonus features, well, this is just, there's quite a lot there, as you can see in there. There's extended editions of three of them, and it's all very exciting and cool. But yeah, Red Dwarf 7. Inside, we have th that's how a three disc set should look like, and then now we have the booklet. Uh, also, we have a sticker there which says includes Identity Within, which was on my Series 6 when I brought it, but that doesn't have Identity Within, but this does. So I thought I'd put it on here, it's purple as well, so I'm assuming it would have come on my Series 7. Now we move on to the last Red Dwarf in the sort of original run. If you could call it that. Yeah, call it that. Uh, which is Series 8, but before we go anything, remember that Series 6? Yeah, this has three discs now. Three discs like that. There's the booklet, three discs. Uh, but yeah, haven't watched the bonus feature on this. We have Back in the Red Part 1, Back in the Red Part 2, Back in the Red Part 3, Back in the Red Extended Edition. There's all the Back in the Reds. Uh, we have Cassandra, Crichton TV, Pete Watt Part 1, Pete Part 2, and Only the Good. Bonus features, The Tank, Original Documentary, Comedy Connections, Red Dwarf Special. Supermodels, feature storyboard sequences, children on the sketches, loads and 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 loads of stuff. It's a shame though, really, because these are pretty shit season. Well, they're not shit. The these are the weaker ones series, Red Wolf seven and eight, just because they're the more modern ones, and the more modern something gets, it's normally seen as worse. I'd say Simpsons is a good example. So maybe not South Park, because South Park gets really good as it goes on. But yeah, I'm just going to stop blabbering. Uh, now we move on to Back to Earth. Voila. Uh, just take a look at the discs. The, oh. Yeah, I hate this. I really, really... Not, not Back to Earth, I hate this case completely. Now, if you didn't know, the first eight series of Red Dwarf matched up to form a Red Dwarf symbol. Now uh, you can see we've got the faces of all the characters and BBC and there's Red Dwarf and all the colours. And they all had the same backs on. So it was really nice. Then we were given this pile of shite. So I said no and I made my own cover. 
that was from someone else's, which I really liked about implant implanting. But apart from that, everything else is my own design. So now, mine looks like this. I'm quite proud of that. I quite like it. Uh, it. The printing quality wasn't the best, but from a distance it works. Red, red Dwarf, Red Dwarf 9. Yeah, and then inside we have the discs in a very nice to this set. And then there's all the ones. Beat the Geek Edit I need to get as well. Uh, and Body Snatcher. Those two Red Dwarf DVDs are what left because I do have just the Smegs. More on that in a le later. And then we have Series 10. Uh, I'm not going to go through these because you're not really much to say. It's got the episodes, it's got the bonus features. Obviously, this has got Back to Earth 1, part, part 1, 2, 3, Back to Earth. This has Trojan Father of Sons, Lemons, Entangled, Dear Dave in the Beginning. Then we have series 11, which has 20 key, 20 key, I can't, I can never pronounce it. Samosar, Give and Take, Officer Remit, Crisis, and Can of Worms. Uh, yeah, that's series 11. Also, the picture is smaller on the series 11 one, which really annoys me. Yeah. And then I said that we have just the Smegs. So, yeah, if you know just the Smegs, you know it doesn't fit in. So I, once again, said no, and it is going to fit in, so I made another cover. This is all completely my own design. Then we have just the Smegs. Sparehead 3 and the back. Yeah, you can, you can read my stuff. I'm quite happy with it. it, it fits in quite nicely. And yep, so now I shall show you what they look like on my shelf. By putting them on my shelf, they're talking to you because I can't be asked to edit because I am very tired. So, yeah, Red Wolf um, 12 starts on the 12th of October. There's a teaser out, so if you haven't seen it, go see it. Um, and yeah, and we've got to put everything back. Just there we go. Uh, now you can come and have a look. There it is. That's how I display my Red Wolf stuff. That's back to Earth. There's Series 5. But yeah, there it is. I think it looks quite nice. Anyway, let's move on to the last part of my collection. Not much, it's just backwards and hardback, and almost all the magazines. Well, they are. Uh, I've only got really got the stickers from them, apart from that, I've got no other badges. None of that kind of stuff. But yeah, backwards and hardback. And then um, that's it for my Red Wolf stuff. And it's not impressive. I know it's pretty basic. I mean, this oh, this magazine's quite nice. But yeah, uh, I will be trying to get more stuff. I'm gonna. I'm, the DVDs is something I, I think. Beat the Geek is the number one priority, I think, to get. And then after that, just some t shirts and stuff like that from the Red Wolf shop. Yeah, I will be getting more Red Wolf stuff. But yeah, um. So now you've watched this video, uh, I command you to go and watch a meltdown right now. Okay, bye.